Okay, yeah, so good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the long awaited um, crypto boot camp. I think a lot of persons have been saying um, what does it entail? The boot camp has been massive, massively publicized. I want to actually know what and what are inside the boot camp. So, once again, I want to welcome you to the boot camp organized by Tree City Academy. Um, I want to assure you that. At the end of the five days bootcamp, you're obviously going to get value for not just your money, but for your time. Now, like I said earlier, the bootcamp is going to be impactful. I'm going to be impacting knowledge into every single participant. Now, from the Google from all of us field, I discovered that a lot of persons, actually, some are beginners and some are advanced. So since it's a bootcamp, the topics will be selected. So we're gonna do a mixture of both beginners as well as advanced persons. So the topics will cover for beginners and will also carry alongside them, those who are advanced. So without wasting much time, I want to welcome you all to the bootcamp. And I want to assure you that you're gonna get value for just, not just your money, but as well as your time. So um, welcome to the five days crypto bootcamp organized by Trade City, the secret to successful trading. That's why we are here. And uh, my name is Prince Rijar. So um, I'll be your anchor for the five days and I'll take you through the bootcamp trading. So please, if at any point, if at any point you have issues, maybe hearing me or any of the, um, any other distraction that comes along, please do well to just let me know you can do that by signifying in the chat box now at the end of the day there are going to be questions too but before we start properly i would like to take you through the grand rules but before i go into the grand rules please i would like to advise you some of us here are totally beginners so we don't know our left from our right in cryptocurrency space now what you need is 100 percent guidance and mentorship so you need to be trained properly trained and guided you need to be properly trained and guided. Now, for you to be trained and guided, the bootcamp alone will not give you that full training. This is just five-day training. This is targeted at making you profitable. So if you need proper training, training rather, you might need to come in for training and mentorship. That one is quite separate from this. So this was a special bootcamp organized at aiming all participants to be profitable in their trading experience. So you still need to go ahead. Don't just stop at where I'm stopping. Don't just stop at the topics here. If you're a beginner, I'm gonna take you through from the scratch down to some advanced topics in cryptocurrency. So at the end, I expect you to do your research. You can start building from there on your own. You can also come to the academy and get trained through the academy too. So the advice here is don't just depend on the training alone. After the training, I'm going to absorb all the participants into my VIP signal group. Like I said, the target is to ensure that all participants become profitable. So after the trading, training rather, I will absorb everybody into my VIP group. Now for one month, you will be in the VIP group. Ask me, what will you be doing? I'm going to be dropping signals. I also drop some analysis in the group too. Now, the reason why I'm adding everybody to the group is because I want you to start making money. I believe in a very simple thing, train, trade, and end. So while you're being trained or you've been trained, I want you to start in. So for one month, you should be able to at least they cover the money you paid for the bootcamp and some other expenses too. So that's why I'm gonna be adding you to my VIP signal group. I will drop some signals. You just take my trade and be a profitable trade too. So don't just limit yourself to just here alone. I think the price has actually been slashed down. I also give some um, scholarship to some persons as well, just because I feel like I want to give out to the community and this is the only way I can do it from now. So after now, stay with me. And we're going to dive into the community together. I'm looking at building a crypto community that has a lot of opportunities. I'm having a dream and a vision, and some of the things I'm going to be telling you, you've not heard it anywhere. I think in day three or so, I'll be telling you about lies. They told you about cryptocurrencies. Hope you know they are lies. Some of the things they told us were not true. 
I'm going to deeply explain all these in details before the end of the crypto bootcamp training. So stay tuned, relax, have your cup of water with you, your bottle of water with you. At a point, if you're pressed, you can use the restroom and come back. Now, I'm not going to rush anybody. I'm going to take my time and I will explain. But before then, let's go over to the grand rules. So quick one, we have rules. Rule number one, please please is a recorded zoom meeting so i would like all participants to mute their background now there is only one condition where your background should not or might not be muted that's the condition where your background where you are is not noisy if you're in your house you're in your room alone and there are no noise and interference coming in you could leave your background unmuted that's one now two please you need to Able your video. We don't want to start seeing your face, your fine face or faces while we're learning. It might serve as a source of distraction to another person. So for that reason, please also disable your video. So you need to click on the start video. It should cross it as well as your microphone. It should also cross it too. Now the next thing is you need to write down your questions and ask them when it is time. What I mean by that is so that I can flow along without any distraction. I will need to be teaching and I'll be teaching. So you don't just call me and say, I have a question when I'm still flowing. It's more like you're drawing me back. So just write your questions down. I believe you all have a note. Those who fully paid, you have your note, you have your note with you. So you're gonna be writing them down. At the back of your note, write down your questions. When I'm done, I am going to entertain questions. If the questions are not enough, like the time are not enough, tomorrow I will schedule a one on one meeting with you. And I will entertain questions. Now, the next thing is please, we don't welcome abusive words. Do not use abusive words on somebody. Do not also use abusive words while in the class, too. Now, this is a recorded Zoom meeting. They are going to be publicized. I'm going to be uploading it on YouTube, too. And the link will be shared. And all that who might be interested in a boot country like this, we are going to watch. So we will not welcome abusive words too. So everybody should act formal. Let's be all professional and we will have a very nice time. So once again, I want to welcome you to the Trace City Academy five-day crypto bootcamp. I want to assure you that you must get value for both your time as well as the money you paid for the training. So I'm going to be taking you through the topic i have for today so today we'll be starting with an um, introduction to cryptocurrency and um, that's the topic for today i'm going to be explaining things please you will need to write them down you will need to write them down especially some of the things you never knew you need to write them down then at the end i will also entertain questions so um, i'm going to give um us let's say two minutes to get our note and a pen for those who don't have for just a few minutes to relax so that we can dive into the class. So in two minutes time, I am going to be continuing with the lecture. Thank you. Okay, so I am I'm picking you through the ground rules, please. You need to mute your mic. Also disable your video. Now write down your questions and I will attend to them at the end of the class or in between the class. Please do not use abusive words. Somebody's background is still on. Please, you might need to mute yourself. I believe we are professionals. So please, everybody should act very... Okay. So the first question is, what is cryptocurrency? What is cryptocurrency? If it was to be a physical class at this particular point, I would love almost everybody to say one or two things about cryptocurrency. That is to say, we've heard a lot of things about cryptocurrencies. We've heard people define cryptocurrencies. We've heard people say one or two things about cryptocurrency. But as a beginner, you hear the word crypto, cryptocurrency, what comes to your mind? I'm gonna be breaking it down. Now we hear the word cryptocurrency is a compound word. I'm going to take you to the derivation where the word came from. It's actually not an English word. It was actually translated. The word cryptocurrency 
is a digital encrypted medium of exchange. Let me explain what that line means. The world cryptocurrency is a digital encrypted currency. Now a currency could be a paper, a currency could be an item, a currency is anything that can be used as a means of exchange between two parties. Now, when we were in school, we had got trade by butter, and in trade by butter, there's what we said, I will bring what I have and I will exchange it with what I want. Now you will bring what you have and you will exchange it with what you want. At that particular point, we are trying to achieve exchange. So a cryptocurrency has to do with a digital means of exchange. Now it is not just a digital means of exchange, it is actually a digitally encrypted. If you're doing a WhatsApp video call or a voice call or a chat, WhatsApp will tell you that your chat are encrypted. Now the word encryption talks about security. It talks about high level of security. Someone said it is a digitally encrypted medium of exchange. We are talking about a digitally highly secured means of exchange. Now digital has to do with something you cannot see with your eyes. Like you cannot feel. If I say, okay, what is fiat? Fiat currency talks about our normal um, country currency. If I say, okay, give me a thousand naira note, you can pick one thousand naira note and give me. That is a fiat currency. So it is not digital or visual. What I mean by digital? They are what they are actually abstract. So you don't get to see them. Like you cannot feel them. So it is a digitally highly secured medium of exchange that uses a decentralized platform as a ledger. I'm going to be spending time to explain this in details. Now, I haven't explained what is digital and encrypted, and I haven't talked about a medium of exchange. Now, let me talk about the decentralized platform, which we call the ledger. Now, for those of us who read accounting, a ledger is like a book. It's normally a very big book where you write transactions, what you spent, what came in, what left your organization. That's a ledger. Now, cryptocurrency are digitally encrypted, digitally highly secured means of exchange that uses a decentralized platform as a ledger. Now, that's to say, since we cannot see cryptocurrency, but we can actually use it to exchange things between two parties. Now, since we can't see it, how do we now record transactions between both parties? If party A, let's say I'm sending something to somebody, how can we record how we both transacted since we can't see it? That's not tell you that you cannot use your normal traditional finance ledger to record the cryptocurrency transaction. However, you will now use all of this decentralized platform, which is blockchain technology that I'm going to be talking about in a few seconds to record cryptocurrencies. So the decentralized platform, which is a blockchain technology, comes along with crypto transactions. And that's what we call the ledger. So it's a digitally encrypted medium of exchange that uses a decentralized platform as a means of storing transactions. So if I send a particular coin to B, to person B, the decentralized platform is what holds the transaction history. So it what tells you that, okay, so some amount of coin was sent from here, from A to B, so, so did. Now, this coin that was sent here has actually been received by B. That's what called the decentralized platform. Let me go to the next slide so um, we can explain that later. Now, see, cryptocurrencies are systems that allow for secure payment online, which are dominated in terms of virtual token represented by ledger entries internal to the system. English. Well, let me break it down. Now, they are visual tokens. A token is also a means of exchange. And visual talks about digital. That means you cannot actually see it. 
I don't know if anybody has seen it, seen Bitcoin before. You cannot see it, but we use it at that particular point. We call it visual. Come back to our traditional banking system. If you have 100,000 in your account, can you see 100,000? No, you cannot see 100,000. What you see is the digit, 100,000. But that 100,000 has value because you can use that 100,000 to make payment for another thing by sending it to party B. So that's what we call visual. You can't see it. But the moment you go to the bank, you withdraw your 100,000, it becomes pepper. And once it's pepper, then you can actually feel and touch it. At that point, it is no longer visual. At that point, it is no longer visual. But cryptocurrency, you cannot withdraw. You cannot withdraw Bitcoin and touch it. No. So at that point, you call them visual tokens. Now they are used basically online. So they are for online transaction. And the ledger, which is the decentralized platform, which you also call blockchain technology, is what we use to store this online transaction we are explaining. Now we said allow users to buy goods and services online with a strong cryptography to secure online transaction. Now cryptography talks about the level of security, the high level of security. Now cryptography talks about um, a highly secured means of exchange. So cryptography is trying to explain the level of security of this particular cryptocurrency. So when we are talking about cryptocurrency, we are talking about hidden information that is highly secured, that's just it. So what we are using to exchange value is the information. And the information is one BTC is equal to what? $30,000, that is the information. But however, that information of one BTC equating to $30,000 is highly secured by means of cryptography. That means you cannot break it down. So what matters a lot is what the information in the particular cryptocurrency you are dealing with. So let's go, let's go over again. Now we say the term was actually derived from the Greek word, cryptos, cryptos. And like I said earlier, it means hidden or secret. I'm gonna be doing a video on why governments are fighting cryptocurrencies. So it's gonna be cryptocurrency versus the normal traditional banking system. Now, the question is, the word crypto means hidden or secret. Having a high level of security. So the question is, why is this secret? or this particular information that is hidden, highly secured? That's the question. The question asks yourself, okay, cryptocurrency is, is, it can also be termed to be hidden, hidden information that is highly secured. The question is, why are you securing this information that is hidden? You're hiding something and you're highly securing it. Now, if you go back, you discover that the first cryptocurrency that was discovered, Bitcoin, was discovered by a man or a group of people nobody knows. That's all called the uh, Satoshi Na Nakamoto. Nobody knows them or man. We don't know if it's a man. We don't know if it's a group of people. That means they were acting according to the name. Crypto is hidden and they have value. So nobody knows them. So because of that, it can also be used to do a lot of illegal things. And that's why government are fighting cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrency was derived from the Greek word cryptos, which means hidden or a secret that is highly secured. That's the graphy. Now we said they are digital money designed to be quicker, cheaper, and more reliable than our fiat money. When we talk about fiat money, we are talking about our normal banking money. For Nigeria, our fiat is the NGN. For some other country like US, the United States dollars, that's their fiat system. Now, there are a lot of disadvantages between the fiat system and crypto. Okay, sorry I lost connection. Sorry I lost connection. I'm sorry about that. This is uh, they are bound to happen. So just tell me. So I was explaining cryptocurrencies and I said they are hidden, hidden information. 
that is highly secured. So in cryptocurrency talks about a hidden information that is highly secured. Now, I was also trying to explain what we mean by their digital money designed to be quicker and cheaper. Now, that takes us to advantage of cryptocurrency. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. So we say transaction are usually what affordable and fast. So crypto transactions are usually very affordable and they are fast. Now, also say Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency created in 2019. Now, it was made by an unknown person or a group of people, and they go by the name was Satoshi Nakamoto. So, cryptocurrency talks about a secret information that has a high level of security. I'm changing the research on it. Why that information was highly secure? That was a secret. And that's why a lot of people are fighting it. No matter how you fight, you making wave. There must be something behind this type of information. Even the person or people who discovered it, they didn't want us to know their identity. If I was this man, uh, Satoshi, or these people, I would come out now. And once I come out, obviously I should be the world most influential man because everybody in the world now talks about cryptocurrency. But it's not coming out. Maybe one day he will come out to say himself, now, there are a lot of people who have been trying to impose as this person or group of person, but the truth is we don't know him. And that's that for cryptocurrency. So I talked about digital ledger. Let me briefly explain what we mean by digital ledger. Now, a digital ledger a digital ledger composed of all transactions ever made in a particular cryptocurrency. So when we talk about ledger, like I said earlier, that's to do with recording of transactions. And most of the times these transactions manually are being recorded. But in cryptocurrency, we cannot record this in one because we are dealing with it. because we are dealing with Digital currencies, so we cannot record them manually. Please, I'm having interference. Please, your mic is on mute. Can you do it? I think the interference is coming from there. Please, you might need to mute your mic quickly. Okay, so blockchain technology talks about the ledger or the book. Let me use the word the book where we record every transaction that happens in cryptocurrency. Now, it's not like a human being who does the recording. It is the system, that's why it's called a technology. So the blockchain technology actually does the recording automatically. So it is the digital ledger that supports cryptocurrency transactions. And that's why these days we are trying to bring in blockchain in almost everything we do. For example, uh, my friend, we are trying to do a research work and we're asking, okay, what can we use blockchain? What are the problems we are facing that we can use blockchain to solve? And I talked about elections and I said, okay, can we do a blockchain election? By doing a blockchain election, we try to see that there would not be any form of rigging because the advantages of blockchain are number one, it is transparent. What I mean by transparency, it is open. Traditionally in the finance sector, the ledger book where they record credit and debit are mostly kept hidden by one person. So if you want to know how much left the company and how much came into the company, obviously you must have been a senior person in the organization. But contrary to that, the blockchain technology is very open. So you can actually see what transactions are caught. So because of that, it is transparent. Everybody can see what is happening. That's one of the advantages of it. Everybody can see what is happening. 
I was um I was um conducting a transaction in one of my school group and somebody said she sent a coin to another person. So as the admin, I was supposed to pay the other person after the seller and the buyer rather had received the coin. So they sent the coin. This person said, that's the buyer said, she has not gotten the coin. But the seller is saying, she has sent the coin. So the money was with me. It's either a refund back to the seller or I paid the buyer. And what happened? I said, okay, this is blockchain. Everything is transparent. I asked the seller a couple of questions. I got his address and I went to blockchain technology. I pasted it there and I saw the transaction history and I discovered that she, she has actually sent the coin and is already reflecting in the buyer's wallet. So at that point, I never wanted, I never waited for the buyers um, go ahead to pay the seller before I just send the money to him. Reason being that it is transparent, you cannot lie. If I sent you one BNB now, you cannot tell me you did not receive it. What I need to do is get your receiving address, go to BSC scan, and I'll paste it there, and I'll see transaction histories, and I'll see so, so, so amount that left. So these things are very open. That's one. Then we say these transactions are made up of blocks. You can see here. The flash over. Oh, hold on. Please, let's have a mic on. Mm -hmm. Please. Our video should also be off. We have grand rules for those who missed it. Please, let's have a mic on mute. Our video should also be off. Those we are our grand rules. So don't entertain any distraction. Thank you. So as I was explaining, we said these transactions are made up of blocks. And when you talk about blocks, you're talking about computers linked together. You can see them here. This is one computer, one computer, another computer, another computer. Now, one of the reasons why was because of miners. Miners are people who add all these things to a transaction. So they add blocks to transactions. So the moment we don't have enough by miners, obviously transaction histories will be delayed. And that is also a very bad fundamental for Bitcoin price. So if I sent you one Bitcoin and it's taking you, let's say, 15, 30 minutes to receive it, it will delay transactions. So because of that, a lot of people will not want to transact with Bitcoin. And this is buying and selling. So because a lot of people will not want to do that, obviously the price, it will not be a good news for the price. So that would be a negative one. So because um, some countries actually ban cryptocurrency transactions, so miners were actually relocated because they are the ones that add blocks to this particular cryptocurrency. So you can mine, a lot of persons can mine. If you have the equipment, you can also do it. But I'm not gonna go deep into mining for now. Mining is something you can do research about it. If you want to mine, I have a friend who said he did mining for some time and actually stopped. The reason why he stopped was because of the running cost. And the rolling cost is one of the very key things. You need 247 electricity. Your system should be always on before you do all of that too. Actually, there are other semi-mining that people do with app and some other small, small mining of which are not really what we are talking about here, but we'll see called the mining too. Now the third one is that they are purely decentralized and they are completely public. So everyone can see every transaction. You can also send me one Bitcoin. And I'll say, I know I did not receive it. I say, I'm lying. I will just tell you, it's open. That is the advantage of blockchain. So in my the research with my friend, I say, okay, let's assume like Nigeria, can we use blockchain to do election? Whereby when you're casting your vote, everybody knows who casted that vote, who the person voted for. So if we can achieve that, then obviously we can have a free and fair election. Apart from blockchain, technology being used for election. There are other things you can use blockchain to do. Now, some people now are starting to adopt blockchain as a means of giving certificate of ownership. If I buy a land now, what I need to do, you send me my certificate of ownership for that land, that's my C of O, through blockchain technology. So what I need to do, if next person want to buy that, So what is happening is, now, if I purchase a land from you, you give my blockchain certificate of ownership. So it's on the blockchain technology. So that particular point is made visible. Now, if 
person B wants to buy that same plot of land, he goes to blockchain technology, do some research about that particular land, and he will discover that he has been sold. Because the problem we have is because one owner, landlord, will sell a particular plot of land to three different people, and that can cause confusion. So with blockchain technology, we can also solve that. Because the blockchain technology is very transparent, it's open, everybody can see what everybody is doing. We we'll call it decentralized. So you don't need a central authority to do a particular thing. You can sit down in your house and you do it. That's why people are creating coins by themselves. I can sit down here and I will create my own coin. You can sit there and create your own coin. You do not need to send a mail to maybe central blockchain technology to approve you creating a particular coin. So those are the reasons why um, Cryptocurrency is actually making way because it uses a technology that is open to everybody, not just limited to a particular person, and everybody can actually work on it. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is smart chain technology or smart chain contract. A lot of us have been using it, but we don't even understand what we are using. So what is a smart contract? What do we mean? Let me explain in a nutshell. Now, a smart contract talks about an agreement between two persons. So person A and person B will agree on a particular thing and they will set their terms. And now once they set their terms, the smart chain will automatically approve that agreement once those terms have been met. Let me explain. Person A said, today is Monday. Person A said, by 12 o'clock, let's say 12 p.m. on Tuesday, I am going to send you, let's say 10,000 naira to person B. Now, one person B receives 10,000 naira by 12 p.m. on Tuesday. Now, he or she is going to release a product to person B. So the agreement there is, I will send the money by 12 p.m. tomorrow. Then you will release that product to me. That is the agreement. So you now employ what we call smart contract. Now the smart contract that uses the blockchain technology will now automatically execute the deal once person A sends the money and once person B releases the coin. So if these two agreements are not met, then it will not be executed. That's why we call them blockchain technology. So they, 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 they mix blockchain technology with agreed terms. That's what we call the contract. So at that particular point, we call them smart contract because they are automatic. So two persons agree a particular team, set their terms, and allow it to execute. So automatically, once those two terms met, the transaction we execute without anybody coming to do another thing again. So they make they make efficient and affordable system of doing business because you don't need a third party. Once the two conditions are met, automatically they are executed. Because there's two people doing business, two people doing business, all they need to do is all they need to do is set out their requirements, and this requirement will be automatically executed once the terms are met. That's all about smart chain. Many of you have been using it, a binary smart chain. You don't even know what, what's a binary smart chain. The binary smart chain is because you will agree a particular thing, and once those things are met, automatically the binary smart chain approves it. So we have a lot of smart chain network. Some of us will use Ethereum smart chain. Some person will use this and other smart chain networks. So, so the smart chain uses a particular contract, and the contract has to do with agreed terms between two parties. A and B will we'll agree a particular thing. Now they will not Please, Abu Joseph, please, can you just keep yourself muted? Thank you. Now, it's also say it is the requirement. If the requirements are not met, the smart chain deactivates and return whatsoever was storing in both parties. That's to say, if by 12 o'clock, Person A that was supposed to send the money to person B failed to send. 
Now the smart chain will deactivate the transaction automatically and both parties will receive their own thing. So if the transaction are not made, it will not be executed. So the moment the two transactions are made, then obviously it will what, be executed. That's what we mean by smart chain network. Now it makes business fraudless and easier. At that particular point, since it's automatic, if you don't meet my terms, then I'm not gonna do business with you. That's what happened with the smart chain network. So a smart chain network uses a particular contract and the contract is what we said, the agreed terms. So two people must come together, agree on a particular thing. Now the smart contract will automatically execute that once the both of them meet the requirement. Now it is publicly available and unalterable, therefore making both parties responsible for the end of the deal. So if one person violates it, obviously you can confirm the proof of violation. So if I was supposed to send my own part of it and I failed, you can actually confirm from it. For some of us who have tried to send a part or execute a particular transaction on um, Ethereum smart chain, maybe you, you are trying to swap a coin on Uniswap, you see pending after some time. Sometimes you go back to your Ethereum, you click on Ethereum, you see smart chain executed. Sometimes you see failed. Now, if the condition of swapping the coin did not go through, it will show you failed. And by failing, your transaction cost, that's the fee, Ethereum network would have charged you, will be returned back to your wallet because it failed to be executed. So that's one good thing about the smart chain network. And it uses the blockchain technology, which I have, what I have explained. So let me quickly go ahead again. Now, how do we not treat cryptocurrency? I haven't taken you through the basis of cryptocurrencies, how cryptocurrency operates. Now, let's talk about trading cryptocurrency. How do we trade it? Now, in trading, we are trying to refer to exchanging goods and services. Most especially in return for money, they are just few people who do works without expecting money in return. A lot of works, what we are doing today is because we need money. If I'm teaching now, obviously it's because I need money. If you're going to work, it's because you need money. So trading has to do with exchanging goods and services, mostly in return for money. That's what I mean by trading. You're trying to exchange one thing for the other in return for money. Now, the next thing is trading is the act of buying and selling a cryptocurrency with the aim of making profit. Profit. So at this particular point, there's nobody who buy or sell or treat a cryptocurrency with the mind of losing. A lot of people don't trade because they are scared of losing. So trading is the act of buying or selling a particular cryptocurrency with the aim of making profit. That's why they will tell you buy low and sell high because when you buy low and you sell high, you will make profit from that. That is trading. Now it occurs in pairs, trading occurs in pairs. So when are we going over to the platform, that's the exchanges. You're not going to be seeing just BNB. You're going to be seeing coins in pairs. So we have BTC, we have USDT. Now there are two coins you're going to be seeing there. You're going to be seeing a cryptocurrency and you're going to be seeing a stable coin. Now a stable coin does not appreciate or depreciate in value. They are called stable. Like the name implies, they are stable because they do not grow or reduce it. And I always advise people in my classes that that is your money. If you like, have 10 Bitcoin on your Binance exchange or on your KuCoin exchange. I will tell you that 10 Bitcoin, do $30,000 per one Bitcoin times 10. That is not your money. Because a few months before now, one Bitcoin was almost $60,000. So imagine you open your Binance account and you, let's say you had one Bitcoin, $60,000. Oh God, and $60,000 rich. Go and open that same account now. All you'll be seeing is $30,000. So the $30,000 now you're seeing now, it's not your real value or network because by tomorrow you can wake up and you see $28,000. But the money that it is for own is the USDT. The reason being that this cryptocurrency can either go up or come down. So when they go up, they add value. When they come down, they lose value. But a, a stable coin, 
which is which can be a USDT or a BNB, that a BNB USD, that's Binance USD, does not appreciate or depreciate in value. So if I kept 1,000 BUSD in my Binance exchange for the next 10 years, anytime I open it, I must always have 1,000. So the best way to be profitable is save your coin, save them in stables when you don't look, when, when you're not using it or when you're not sure of the market, if you're trading. I repeat, the best way to be profitable is to save your money in stables. Stables has to do with stable coin, especially when you're not sure of the market direction. So if you're a newbie, you just say buy BNB, you just buy BNB and you kept in your wallet. So many persons, a lot of, I know a lot of friends, they bought BNB when it was almost 600, it was $600. Today BNB is, is battling with $290, $300. Tell them to go back and check the value now. They obviously must be regretted. So if you are, if you are a newbie and you're not sure of a particular cryptocurrency, what you do is to save your money in the stable coin till you're sure of it. Okay. On day two, when I talk about trading, I'm going to be explaining some skills of trading these things. Because in trading, you're trying to buy and sell a particular cryptocurrency with the aim of making profit. So if I bought one Bitcoin two years ago, when it was, let's say, $3,000 and today is $30,000, I have made profit. But if I bought one Bitcoin a few months before and it was $60,000 and today is $30,000, I am losing because my capital has even depreciated. So you must be smart. Trading is game. Trading is game. You must be smart. Only the smart ones don't lose. Let me stop there. Okay. So I'm going to explain trading. What is now and and we now trade? Now, basically, there are three types of trading. Basically, there are three types of trading. Number one, we have the spot trading. Number two, we have the future trading. Number three, we have the margin trading. Now, if on my slide, I was able to merge the futures and the margin together because they are almost similar. I'm not going to go detail in explaining them, but I'm just going to tell you what they mean. Now, for spot trading, it entails purchasing a particular cryptocurrency and holding it till the value increases. That's why it's called spot trading. Now, some persons call it spot investment, and you'll be asking yourself, what do you mean by spot investment? What we do with investment? Let's say I have $10,000. I will take my $10,000, go and give it to the investment company. And I will tell them to do what? I will tell them to hold this $10,000 for me. Maybe for five, six years, I will come back get my capital of $10,000 and still get my return of investment on it. Mind you, I didn't know what they did with my $10,000. I don't care to know whether they borrowed it, they ate it, they replaced it. No, for my issue is once I come, give me my capital and what and my return of investment, that is spot trading. So you just buy a particular coin, you leave it. And the reason why you're buying it, you don't just look up and buy any coin. I'm going to be doing a video on mistakes people made in cryptocurrency. One of the mistakes is you buy coin. A lot of persons who bought shit coins are crying now because they buy this one, buy this one. You don't jump as a newbie, you buy and you're for trading. It's buy a particular coin with the mindset that that coin will increase. That is to say, if the coin will not increase, then you should not buy. So that's a personal statement. If the coin will not increase, then you should not buy. That's for spot trading. So before you buy a particular coin, go ahead, do your analysis. Know that that coin will increase in the next two, three, four weeks or one month. Then you can buy and hold. Now in spot trading, you only lose value of your coin, but you don't lose your entire money. For those who bought Bitcoin, when it was $60,000, what they use in buying one was $60,000. Right now, Bitcoin has depreciated to $30,000. What they still have in their wallet is one Bitcoin. But the value of that one Bitcoin has dropped. So you do not lose the value. You may lose the value of your money. Abu Joseph, please, can you stay muted? I'm meeting yourself. What is that interference? Thank you. So the best investment to do for long term is holding. 
majority of the boot camp, we're going to be telling you a lot of things about holding. Most of the lie they told us about holding that many persons are regretting today. I will tell you and I will explain to you is an eye opener. Holding. I tell you, I'm going to be explaining it in details on the final day of the exam. So, like, you shouldn't hold coin. So, like, you shouldn't hold coin. We must know how long we just say, buy this coin. How long will I be holding that particular coin? You must set that time frame. Okay, I'm buying Bitcoin. I want to hold Bitcoin from now to December this year. That's how wise people invest. And that's how wise people spot trade. So once it's December this year, if you like, let Bitcoin go to $100,000. It's a list of my worries. I will sell off. Read. Many persons. Okay. I started following when it was um, $11. $11. I know. $11. My friend used $1,000 to buy BNB when it was around that region. So in, in, in how many months, BNB skyrocketed to almost what, $600, $600, going to $700. In less than how many weeks, BNB dropped from $600 to about $290 something now. Now, people who sold off when it was $600 were the wise investors. And not people who we are still holding till now. Let me leave that one to the final day of the training. I'm going to tell you how to hold a coin. How to hold a coin. You don't just buy any coin and hold. It's a lie. You must tell yourself how I want to hold this coin. You must set time frame. How long will I hold this coin? If you just buy every coin and hold, your wallet will be too loaded. And you will see, you have a big wallet. Too valuable. Now for future trading. Future trading is contra to the spot trading. Future trading. So in future trading, you can actually lose your money. In spot trading, you don't lose your money. You lose, you lose the value of your coin. So once the coin goes back up, you recover your money. But in futures, you can actually lose your money entirely. And this is where the trading proper is. In future trading, you don't need to hold a particular coin. Holding is for spot. For futures, you are not interested in holding. Your mindset is a mindset of a gambler. And a gambler thinks about profit. So your mindset, your interest is to benefit from price movement of the coin. And that's why we do analysis in futures before trading. In sports, you might do analysis too. But you just say you hold. But in futures, you don't hold. Futures don't require you to hold. However, you must think of benefiting from the price movement of that coin on futures. So that's to see you're going to be buying it and selling it at this point. So let me say I'm buying BNB at 300. And once it gets to 310, I am selling it off. So from 300 to 310 is the price movement that I am going to benefit from. That's futures. That's to say, if I bought at 300 with anticipation that it was going to 310 and it now falls down to 290, I am losing. That's the price movement. It's against me, no longer in my favor. Therefore, I can lose my entire money and the market will kick me out. That's all called liquidation. So in futures, you're actually doing trading proper. Now, it's more like you bet on the price of an asset. Okay, see a lot of athletes running and you place your bet that Hussein Bolt will win the race. Now, if Hussein Bolt wins the race, obviously you won the bet. Now, if Hussein Bolt loses the race, obviously you've lost your bet. Have that mindset when trading futures. So if you're analyzing, you believe that Bitcoin will go to, let's say, let me use DMB. DMB is almost, let's say, 290 now. Let's assume. I'm not seeing my chart. Okay, let me use 300. I want to trade futures. You say, okay, DMB will get to 310. So you set your profit at 310. Now, the moment it gets to 310, the price movement favors you. Therefore, you made money. But if it goes to 300 and 290, that means the price movement was against you. 
then you're going to be losing money for negative. That's futures. But in sport, if it goes up, your coin is adding. If it comes down, your coin is losing value. But you still hold that particular quantity of the coin. So for sport, it can come down to zero and still go back up. But for futures, if it comes down to zero, you are out of the market. You need another capital. So say this is purely trading and so involves risks of losing all your phone. So in futures, you need to fund your account. You must have a deposit. Fund your account. Now, from there, you can now be analyzing chart and placing it. Now, for margin, the difference between margin and futures, imagine you borrow money from the broker or the exchange. So the exchange lends you money. And when somebody lends you money, obviously you will pay back. That's the difference between the futures and the margin trading. So I want to encourage everybody. I think for everybody who subscribed to the bootcamp training, I'm going to be adding it to my VIP signal group. Today we made a lot of money. I, I posted it in the group. Just one signal alone, we made a lot of money. And that was a future signal. Now we are in the beer market, so you don't expect to have a lot of spot signals. So spot traders are actually out of the market for now. They are crying. But future traders are the one making money. So the question will now be, okay, if I'm trading cryptocurrency, should I be one-sided as a spot trader that I only make money when the market is going up? I should think of me making money when market is goes, uh, going up or it's coming down. That's how smart people trade. So you don't just depend on when, okay, when we get to bull market, that's when I'll start making money. What if we never get to bull market for a long period of time? Then obviously you will not be making money. But right now, if the market likes, let it fall to zero. I will be happy trading it because I'm doing futures. And I know as the market is falling, I'm making money. If you like, let it start going up, skyrocket to the sky. I will be happy doing it because I know as it's going up, I'll make money from futures. So I want to encourage everybody, think future trading. That is the way out of this bear market now. But please do not trade futures. Please do not trade futures unless you've been trained. Please do not trade futures unless you've been trained because you can lose your money. My friend lost $200 the same time because he was trading two different coins. Binance sent him two liquidation emails at the same time. For those of you who understand cryptocurrency, you will know that cryptocurrency is Bitcoin dependent. That's to say, if the price of Bitcoin falls, then we expect all coins to do what to fall. So at that particular point, if you're future trading, let's say you were buying and Bitcoin misbehave, start dropping. Obviously, you just have liquidation. So only trade futures when you've been trained or you're taking signal from a reliable source. Okay, um, uh, time is fast spent. Let me see what else I have on the slide. Okay, um, let me talk about orders, orders. What that talks about a way of you getting into the market. So it talks about way of you getting into the market. So if I want to get into the market, let's say I want to buy something, I want to buy a phone. There are two ways I can buy a phone now. I can stay in my house and place my order on any of the e-commerce sites and they will bring it to my house. Or I can leave my house, walk down to the market and I pay for my phone instantly and I go home with it. So we have the instant order and we have the pending order. So there are two types of order in the market. We have the instant order and we have the pending order. Now the instant order talks about a transaction that opens immediately at the market price. So there is no delay. That's why it's called instant. It's more like you, you want the phone. If you place an order from e-commerce, they might give you two, three working days before they will deliver it. But if you walk down to the shop, as you're coming back from the shop, you come back with your phone. That's instant. Now, it is also faster in execution because it is instant. Now, it gives you best market price, which might not be the same with what you saw on the price. Let me explain. If you're using instant market order to buy a particular cryptocurrency, now, what happens is 
the exchange or what I'll call the market will not choose a particular price for you within the range of what you saw. So at that point, let me see the current market price of BNB is um, 300. You use market order. At that point, you're blindfolded. So for those of you who use a market order on trading, once you click market order, you don't get to see the price. The price box will disappear. So at that particular point, you're blindfolded. Now, what that means is when you're blindfolded, the market can give you, instead of 300 that you saw, it can give you 299. It can give you 298. It can give you 299 point something. Now, how will you know that the market did not give you the exact 300 you saw? It's when you go to your other book. So that's one disadvantage of the market. So because it's instant, it chooses what it calls the best price for you. But that best price might not be what you saw before placing the trade. So because of that, we said it's least efficient to use because he has this atom of cheating. Therefore, it is least efficient to use. Everything has advantages and disadvantages. Now let's go to the pending order. The pending order talks about it allows you to set where you want to buy. BNB is 300. I don't care. I know that it will fall to 270. Please put me in the trade. Once it gets to 270, I set my order and go and see it. The moment it gets to 270, automatically it executes. So the pending order allows you to set where you want to buy. So you choose where you want to buy your particular cryptocurrency. That's the advantage of that. Now, because you are the one choosing where you want to buy, obviously the disadvantages, you might remain there forever because if BNB never gets to 270, then that order will never be executed. So you might come back one month later and you see that, ah, you still have that pending order. And what that means is it has not been executed because price never dropped down to the price you chose. So it might not be executed forever. Now, it gives you the desired price. So any price you desire, that's what it gives you. So there's no cheating. So because of that, you say it is more efficient to use because I'm the one choosing where I want to say there's no atom of cheating. It is more efficient to do what? To use. So those are the types of order we have, instant order and pending order. Let me further break these two order down to explain what we mean. So an example of an instant order is what we call the market order. Then an example of the pending order is our limit order, our stop limit order, and our one cancel the order order. That's all called the OCO order. Because these orders are pending. Reason being that you set your where you want to enter the market or where you want to leave the market and you leave it. Now your trade will only be executed when price get to that particular point you sold. So let me say I was having BNB and I'm putting my sell limit order at 310 and the price of BNB now is 300. I can go and sleep. The moment the price moves to 310, it will sell off my BNB to a stable coin for me automatically. But if I want to use the instant order, which is a market order to sell my BNB now, if it's 300, the market order might sell it for me at 300 or 299, or something below that, and instantly I will get my stable coin. So an example is market order for instance, an example of pending order is limit order, stop limit order, and one cancel the order order. So okay, and um, this becomes my final slide before I will entertain questions for the remaining 30 minutes like we promised. Let me now open your eyes to opportunities in cryptocurrency space. I want you to know that Cryptocurrency is not about trading. So when you have crypto trading, no. There are a lot of things you do. Very soon, I might stop trading. I'm serious. Very soon, I, might, I know friends who don't trade, but they're making it big in the space. So it's not about trading alone. So if you're limiting yourself to just trading alone, obviously you don't really understand this space. There are a lot of money. You can make money from this space, even without you trading. So number one is trading. Trading is buying and selling of coins. So you buy low and you sell high, you make money. That's trading. So you can for yourself. Good. Now, apart from trading, can I do other things in crypto? Because crypto is like a world, very diverse. So there are many things you can do to make money. So one is trading. 
joining minus half a lot of coins. For those who mine Bitcoin, they have a lot of Bitcoin because they pay them for their work. So they pay them for their work. They have a lot of coins. So you can mine have money. Now the next thing is you can buy coin and hold. That's buying and holding of coins. You can buy and hold. You will have money. I told you I knew BNB when it was eleven dollars. There was a time I had. I had came BNB in my end wallet at a particular point. So what I did then was buying and holding. So as a smart person. When it gets to a particular price, what would I would what I would do is to sell off. I made money from cryptocurrency. Now I can say, okay, I want to do long term investment, two three years. I will buy this coin now because now is the best time to buy coin and hold. I will buy them now. I will lock them in a wallet. When you store the trust wallet for my phone, write down my keys, my recovery phrase somewhere else. And next year or two years' time, I'll come back and open them because I believe the price must have increased. That's buying and holding of coins. And the top quick top question is crypto. The um, fourth one is crypto jobs. And this is the aspect where some persons don't actually know there are jobs in cryptocurrencies. So my friends work for 20, they have 20 crypto jobs they are doing, they don't even have time. Me personally, I do crypto jobs. So sometimes I don't even look at charts. Sometimes I just do my analysis on my chart. I'm waiting for it to play along and I'm busy with crypto jobs. Now the question will not be what are crypto jobs? Crypto jobs are projects. Now this project needs people that will promote it to the community. So you can apply to be an ambassador and your job will be to promote their particular coin. And the moment you promote, they pay you. And I'm telling you there's money in crypto, this crypto job. They pay you, they can pay in their native coin, they can pay you in your stables. And that's another money too. Because a lot of them, they pay massively. 